Hello, and welcome to part 17 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I want to show you how to take the animation that you've created in Blender and render it out to a movie file. Now, along this video series, I've showed you basically everything you need to know to make an animation using Blender. But in this video, I want to show you how to put those things all together and get a finalized video file. We're actually not going to render out directly to a video file, though. We're going to render out instead to a sequence of images and then, again, using Blender, we'll convert that sequence of images into a video file that you can play in any movie player on your computer, including things like Windows Movie Player, QuickTime, VLC, anything like that. The reason why we would want to render out to a sequence of images and not directly to a video file is in case you need to stop rendering at any point. Again, Blender renders out frame by frame, and so if you render out to a video file, you can't just stop in the middle and continue on later in case your computer crashes, or if you just need to restart or turn off your computer, rendering out images is a better idea. It also allows you to render on multiple computers and then put the images together into a single folder before you make the video file. So rendering out to images is just a better idea. Let's go ahead and get started though. There's a few things that we need to get set up before we actually press the animation button, which renders out all of the frames in your animation. We have to trim down the length of my animation. Now, I've gone ahead and made a very simple animation a uh, silly little animation uh, of a snowman uh, kind of sliding in. This is again is the snowman that I made in part 3 of this video series and I've gone ahead and animated him um, sliding in and waving to the camera. I've gone ahead and parented all of the uh, objects together in, in their hierarchy that they need to be so I just had to animate uh, the bottom sphere of the snowman to drag the entire snowman along and then I just added more animation to the different body parts, the arms um, and the head and the hat, etc. Our animation though is just 103 frames long and by default the timeline in Blender is 250 frames long. We don't want to render out all those frames, so I'm going to go and render, render maybe out to frame 110. So I'm going to change this end value to 110 and I'll press enter. That will actually stop and that value is also right here under your camera tab under dimensions. Your start frame is 1, your end frame is now 110 because these two values are linked right there, end and end, end. Next, we have to think about the resolution that we're rendering out to. By default, Blender renders out to 1920, or an image that's 1920 by 1080. These are in pixels, and that's the same size or resolution as a high def TV. That 1080 is akin to 1080p, which is the resolution of most high def TVs. Right below it, though, is the scaling of that image, and by default, Blender is set to 50%, which means that both these values get cut in half which means the image is actually one quarter of this size. It'll still render out the entire image, but it's only one quarter in total size. So I'm going to change that up to 100%. Now, of course, the animation is set to our frame rate. That's the speed, the frames per second. We'll leave that because I animated the animation to 24 frames per second. If I change that here, it would change the speed of my animation, which I obviously don't want. Um, next, let's go ahead and look at the output. So where are we actually saving our files to? I'm going to go ahead and change the uh, default, which is to uh, some temp folder that Blender's made. And I'm going to click on this little folder icon to browse where I want to save my image to, images to. Let's go ahead and click on Desktop. And I'm going to make a new folder to save all these images in, because again, I want to save like 110 images onto my desktop. So on my desktop, I'm going to make a new folder. Uh, by clicking on create new directory and I'm going to call this snowman animation and press enter. I'll double click on that to go inside of it so now we're saving into this is our file path our directory path um, it's my users folder colon desktop snowman animation if you're on a Windows PC I'm on a Mac right now but if you're on Windows you'll see a drive letter here most likely the second row is for the file name and I'm just going to leave it blank because by default Blender names your images via the frame number. So my first frame will be frame 1, so it'll be called 0001 dot and then the image format which will be PNG. Let's go ahead and click accept. Now the image format, as I just said, is going to be a PNG image file. PNGs are very much like JPEGs, which is pretty much what all digital cameras take pictures as. Uh, JPEGs are a great image format, but they are lossy. The more you compress a JPEG, the more they lose, in other words, lossy, the more they lose compression uh, or quality. So JPEGs, you've probably seen low quality JPEGs that have very uh, 
uh, a high amount of pixelation, or get things called artifacts which distort and corrupt the image. PNGs are lossless, but they're also compressed like JPEGs. They don't get as small as JPEGs, but they are a very good quality, and they don't get artifacts, and they don't get worse in quality the more you compress them, which is why I'm not going to change this compression level. I am, however, going to change the output color scheme. Right now, or by default, PNGs save out to RGBA, that means red, green, blue, and alpha. Alpha means transparent. We don't need that in our images, because video files cannot have transparency, at least as far as I know, so we'll just leave it at red, green, and blue. And the next thing I have to think about, of course, is sampling. Now, my render samples right now, I've only turned up to 50. That's a very low number because this is just a demo. If you're actually rendering something out to, you know, to be a commercial or something that you want to show off, um, you would ch change that up to maybe 500 all the way up to possibly 2,000. That's just a ballpark. That number is up to you. The more samples, of course, the less grainy this will look. And this is only at 10 samples right now. Let's go ahead and render this out. Uh, again, I have 110 frames, so my rendering is going to take a little bit uh, more than this video will allow. So I'm going to stop the video after I press render, and I'll come back when the video is all rendered out and I have my 110 images in my Snowman animation folder. Please note that I've gone ahead and changed my display uh, from the image editor window to a new window. So when I go ahead and press animation, a new window will pop up with the rendering. I'll press animation and after a few seconds I'll pause and be right back with my finished animation. Alright, so I'm back and I've finished the rendering of my animation. I made one little change though. I cut the animation off at frame 105 instead of 110 just to save time and because my animation only really went to frame 103 anyways. Let's go ahead and press escape on the keyboard to get out of that big render window and what I'll do at this point is I'll save my Blender file and start a new Blender file because we're going to make a whole new interface to make our sequence of PNGs into a movie file. So again, Control S or Command S on your keyboard and then File New and click on Reload Startup File. Before we change anything in here though, I'm going to flip back over to my computer just, just to show you that on my desktop I have a folder now called Snowman Animation and inside of that folder I have a whole folder of PNG image files that are all about 1.2 megabytes, which is a quite large file size. So if you're working on a uh, computer with a smaller hard drive, like a solid state drive, you might want to think about using JPEGs instead. Um, let's flip back over to Blender, and I'm actually going to switch this main large window into a kind of window that you haven't seen before. Of course I'll do that by clicking on the uh, Change Window button. The kind of window that we're going to use is called a Video Sequence Editor, not to be confused with the Movie Clip Editor. The Video Sequence Editor basically allows Blender to act like a video editor, sort of like iMovie, or Windows Movie Maker, or Adobe Premiere, or Sony Vegas, any of those. This is very similar. This is basically the tracks that you would have in lining up all your movie files, uh, and audio files, and still pictures. but this whole screen is missing a video window. Now you might think that I'm, I would have to divide this window into two, and I could, but actually down here on the header of this video sequence editor window, I can change the window to just be a video screen, or again, flip back just to be the tracks, or to be both, that's what I'm gonna do here. So it's actually both, although I think my header is hiding the bottom part, and that's because of what I last did in Blender. I squished it. Um, Otherwise, what you could do is divide this window into half, which is what I would actually recommend, and then change the bottom one, the bottom whole window into the tracks, and the top whole window into the video screen. That might work the best for you. Let's go ahead and add that sequence of images. So in the tracks window, I'm gonna go ahead and go down to add, and I'm gonna select image. You might think that you would select movie, but movie files, or this option, only allows you to add one file. In the image option, you can select a whole folder or, ho or a whole bunch of images and import them as an image sequence, and Blender will recognize the fact that the files are named numerically. So let's go ahead and click on image. Now I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm already here, but I'll go to my desktop and go to my Snowman animation folder. Here are all my images, all 1 to 105. And I'm just going to press A a few times so that everything becomes orange. 
and I'll add image strip. If you only click on the first one, it'll only add that one, so make sure you have everything selected. When I do that, you'll see a few changes happen. I have now the first frame displaying on my screen, the snowman's off to the side, and I've got a, a video strip here, or the sequence of my images. It's a strip. You can select it, or you can deselect it. If you select it, you can grab it to move it around, and you can cut off the end by dragging the first frame uh, to the left of the frame one point. You'll notice though that this, much like a timeline or a dope sheet, is a representation of basically frames over time, but it's not displaying in frames, it's displaying in seconds. If you would rather see the number of frames, what I would do is go to the view menu and turn off show seconds, and then it will display the frames again. So what I'm gonna do here is press G to grab this and put the beginning at frame one, and now we know that the end, if I use, again, my green playhead, if I go to the end, well, it basically ends at 105, but the very next frame which it's displaying is black, which is 106. And of course, I can use my arrow keys to move my playhead around. At this point, I have to change the end point of my render, because it goes on forever, or at least to 250 at this point. To change the end point, I could uh, divide this window into two, and change the bottom window into a timeline, and this way I actually get my, my VCR buttons, as I call them, and I can go back to the beginning, and I can press play to watch the animation. It might not play back at the full speed, it'll display your frames per second up here. Mine might be slow because I'm recording my screen right now, uh, and I can press escape to stop it. To cut off the end of the movie down to 105, again, I can change this end value, or if I don't want a timeline on my screen, I can change the end value over here um, end frame 250 to 105. It's at this point where again I want to change the output location where I'm saving the video file. So I'm going to click on my little folder icon and just go to my desktop and press accept. Now I need to select a video format and this is where it gets confusing or it's where there are a lot of options. Now coming from experience recording screencasts on my screen uh, on both Windows computers and on Macs, I know that video codecs as I politely call it, are a bag of hurt. Video codecs are a mess. There are really th three things to think about when you're making a video file. What is the video codec? That means the compression algorithm that you're choosing. It could be H.264, it could be XFID, it could be DivX, it could be XFID, there are so many, there could be Motion JPEG, there are so many to choose from, and that's the way that the picture is compressed within the video file. And then there are audio codecs. Yes, I can go down to the add option in my in my tracks and add a sound file if I, want, if I have a soundtrack and I can add multiple pictures. This is just like a full-fledged video editor in here, although the interface is not as great as others that you might be used to. Um, so the one I would suggest for video files is H.264. H.264 has sort of become the standard. It's the video codec that is used most widely on devices like iPods and iPads and really all cell phones, even Android cell phones. Uh, it's the standard for uh, Blu-ray discs, I believe, or at least a variant of H.264, and it just tends to work really well, and pretty much everything plays it nowadays, so I'm going to select that one. But that's just the video codec. If I go down to the next area down, when I select H.264, this encoding section becomes available, and this is where I get to select the wrapper, the container for the video file, which right now is an AVI. You probably recognize AVI. There are other ones like MPEG4, QuickTime, which is .mov, OGG, which is actually just .ogg. It's the extension on the end of the file name as well. Uh, what I would suggest, again, is not AVI. I would suggest MPEG4. That's the standard that, again, YouTube uses. YouTube does use MPEG4 files or wrappers or containers with H.264 video codec. We're not going to talk about audio because I don't have any audio in this video. It's just a mute render. All right, the next thing and the last thing I'll say, actually, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to change the resolution of the video. Right now it's 1920 by 1080, but it's cut in half. That means each of those is divided by two, which means the video is actually one quarter the size of that resolution. So I'll turn this up to 100%. And of course, I can scroll to zoom in here and orbit to pan around if I want to see a certain part of it or the whole thing. Um, the last thing again I want to say is the bitrate. Now by default this bitrate is 6000. Um, that's a pretty good quality. You can just leave it at that and you'll be happy. But if you want a smaller video 
form or video file, you'll want to turn this down. Now, what do I suggest? Well, try about 2000 and see how you like that quality of video or if that file size is acceptable. And that's what I'll do right there. So I'm saving up to my desktop as an H.264 video with an MPEG-4 um, file extension or wrapper or container and at 1080p, 1920 by 1080. When I go ahead and press animation, it'll render out the entire video. It'll render out, but it's not taking very long at all. It's going at several frames per second because it doesn't have to calculate all the lighting. In just a second, I'm going to flip back over to my desktop where I can play my video. There we are. It's finished. If I go back over to my folder of images and go back to my desktop, you'll see that I now have a video file that's right there. I didn't give it a name when I went to the directory where I was going to save, so I could rename it at this point, but right now I'll just play the video file. There it is, my cheesy amateur snowman animation video. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.